All right. So today we're going to add a path to this. So I've got a you know, scene. I've got a plane with a box, a cone, and a cylinder on it. And so I want to make the camera kind of come up, go over here, and then come back towards the cylinder. Just have it follow that little path there. So first thing I want to do is I need to go to shapes. I want to draw just a line. And I want to draw out kind of where I want it to go. And you don't have to be real exact. If you have a big area that you want to cover, zoom out before you start drawing a line. And once you draw a line, you can't Okay, they fixed it. Oh, you can zoom, but you can't pan, I guess. So I could go here. But, so you can zoom, you just can't pan it, or else it's going to finish that line for you. So maybe I'll put that one there. And then right click, or hit the middle wheel, and it'll get you out of the... So there's my, my line. If, you, if you're zoomed out and you don't really get points exactly where they are, don't worry about it. You can always pick a line, come back to modify, and go to the vertex. So now I can grab each point, and I can move them around. So I can grab that, move it over, whatever I want to do. But this is still kind of a general path because when we actually tell the camera to follow it, it's going to curve these corners for us. So this is just kind of a general, where do we want it to go, how many kind of things we want to do. <coughs> also one thing to see is the length of the segments. When we do it, it's automatically going to make each of these kind of equal space, equal time. So. You can adjust that later on by moving the keys back and forth, but it's going to automatically make each one of those kind of the same time period. So if you have them more evenly spaced, it'll automatically be more of an even speed throughout the, the animation. So questions? Yep. Can you actually draw an arc or two in there? Yep. Or so, the lines? so when you're drawing a line, instead of just Poking it, just clicking if you click and hold. So you can move the mouse. So right here for corner, it says in corner smooth. So if you drag it, you can do smooth. So now if I click, it's a sharp corner. If I click and hold it, it lets me drag it into a, a smooth corner. Then I can click. And, so I can click here, click and drag it, click and drag it. Click. But when I go into and to make it follow the path, it's going to curve the corners anyways. So if you want real small curves, then if you just want to curve the corner here, but if you want like a big curve for it to follow, then you can do that. Okay. So another thing to look at is that line. Where is it? Right now it's at zero. And so it'd be really nice to have it actually up here at the level where I want my camera to be. So I'm just going to raise that up to five. That actually is probably a little bit lower than the camera. The camera's at six, so I can just keep that up to six. There too. So whatever units you're using, you can actually move that up. I could go in and go to vertexes. And actually move individual vertexes up and down also. So I can make that vertex go up. So that's going to kind of raise up and then drop down. Maybe I'll take this one and make this one lower. And then here I'll just keep it at the same height. So I kind of get that path where I want it. I can turn off sub objects. So, what do you think I should do next? 
What's, what, what thing should I click on? The camera, right? Because that's what I want to change. So I'm going to go to the camera. I'm going to come over here to motion. The motion tab here. I'm going to go to tra trajectories here. And then now I can set my time period. So what frame do I want to start at? What frame do I want to end? How many samples? So how many keys do I want to add? So you know, it'll tell it to be 20 keys over the length of the 100 frames. Convert from, click on the line. You can see on the line that's longer, these boxes, these boxes here, those are my keyframes. So at if I have them on that keyframe there, so those are my keyframes. The, the longer piece, they're a little bit further spaced out than on the shorter piece. <clears throat> so, am I stuck to that? If I play it, it kind of speeds up, slows down. So I could move it by grabbing these keys down here that are further apart. Let me select what's that? It's that one. So instead of making it ten apart, I'm gonna make these five apart. So I can kind of adjust those and, and move those time, those blocks around. Move kind of where that one is. So I can move those to adjust it. I can also move the position of it here along the, the, the path. Sub-objects, and now I can go in and actually grab each of these and change its position. So that's kind of what I prefer to do, is instead of going here and trying to adjust these, I'll come up here and I'll move these until they're equally spaced. It's a little easier to, to do. So I'll pull it there. So I can adjust those. And make this a little bit more rounded there. So I decided I want this one to kind of dip down a little bit. I want it to pull out. And do something like that. So I could you can move those keys however you want. To, to fine tune it. And what I usually like to do is I'll go here and then I just click on this where it says camera one and I go to cameras and assign it to your camera. So that way when you drag it through, you can actually see what the camera is doing. And I'll let you see this view, I'll let you see that, and you kind of go through and work them together. So you could do it where this one looks fine, but this one doesn't. So you kind of want to work between the both your looking through your camera and looking at the overall. And since here I have this, the some change in elevation, you might want to look here also. 
But what, what, what do I notice about the camera here? Well, it's always pointing straight ahead. It didn't turn, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trajectory only changed position, not rotation. So, what are some ways I can make it actually look and follow this? Could you link it to it? Link it to what? Link it to the first box. Yep, I could have a target somewhere, and then it would always look that same point as it moved around. I could also have the target link to the path also. But instead of having it start at 1, have it start at a negative number so it's ahead of it. And then it did it, it follow it kind of together. So let's try that. Let's convert that to a target camera. I'll pick the target. Motion. Actually, I'll just keep the same time. I'll just move the, the frames. Convert from that. And. Is that line the path of the camera? And you can see it's kind of doing a better job now, right? Mm -hmm. You can see in the top view the, cam the, the target is in front of it. And it's doing a, an okay job. <clears throat> but because I changed where my sub objects are, my keys on my camera, I didn't change them on my target yet, so they're not exactly lined up. Which may be what I want, so that way I can have the target move separately. So it kind of depends on how you want to do it. So I'm going to go back here and do it a different way. So that was one way I can do a target camera and assign the target to the same path, or even a target on a different path, right? So that way the target maybe starts on a path that's ahead and maybe looks other places. And just have them follow both of them. So that's one way. I can also use the free camera and just rotate it myself. So when I start out, I don't really need to turn auto key on yet. I could, but I'm not going to. And so I'm just going to kind of off my lock. I'm just going to rotate it up a little bit so it's kind of looking a little bit upwards because it's, it's going to be raising. And I'm going to go over in here and turn it so that it's actually looking down there. And right here where it says view, what was this box? What did that control? What's this box right here control? What? What are you? What? What does this? What does this box control? What does changing that do? What? This box right here. If I click on it. I get view, screen, world, parent, local, gimbal, grid, and working. Your UCS, yeah, your UCS. Kind of, remember your origin? So right now it's on world, so it's kind of X, Y, and Z coming out towards us, right? If I tell it local, now look at it. This is now lined up with the view of the camera. If I can hear the green line is now lined up with the view of the camera. So now I can actually see how I have that lined up. I can see if where the camera is lined up here with, with my line. So that makes it a little easier to work with. But anytime you have something that's not moving along one of the axes, I like to use the local grid so that way I can kind of move it better. I'm going to go in here and bring it up. 
Also, I'm right clicking, switching between viewports, so that way it doesn't unselect what I have selected. If I go there, now I want to start animating. What do I need to do? No. If I want to come up here, and I want to be able to tell to start making the turn, because I'll, at this point over here, I want it to be looking that way, right? So here, after the turn, I want the camera looking that way. Okay. What do I need to do first before I can do anything there? Turn on auto key, right? I need to turn on auto key. So I'm going to turn on auto key. And what I usually like to do is come right, kind of before my turn. And I just give it a little tiny nudge. Even if I come right back to the same spot, now I have a rotation key down here. So I could rotate it and then come back to the exact same spot, and it still puts a key in. And that's what I care about, is that key. Because now that when I make the new key here, it's only going to make the change from this key to that key, between those two keys. If I didn't put a key here, what would happen? It would start rotating all the way at the beginning. So I know some people have that with your, your balls, right? Your, your bouncing balls. That if you forgot to make a key before you squished it, it would start squishing as soon as it started. So we want to make sure to do that before, come to after the turn. Now we're going to straighten it out. And I can go back, play through that that transition, and see if that's really what I want. You can see right here that this doesn't really line up exactly as it, as it goes through with the path, like right there. The camera's not looking exactly where the path is. You could spend a bunch of time trying to fix this, but what you really care about is what this shows, though. Then we go here and play through this. And see what it's behaving like. So this is going really fast. So maybe that's too sharp. So sharp of a term, maybe I need to adjust the keys and the spacing on it to slow it down a little bit. Or maybe I need a longer timeline, right? So if I go in here, can put it at half speed? Yeah. Or, yeah. I'll play at half speed so I don't have to add more. But I could extend it out of frame to slow it down. Can you extend your key? So that turn actually isn't too bad, right? Can you so you can see here and it makes a little more? turn. What? You say separate your keys more, gives you more uh, time? Mm hmm More longer. Uh, yeah. But if my keys are taking up my whole timeline, so I could also just go back into here and then rescale it. Instead of being 100 frames, make it 200 frames, right? Now I can play it back at one to one speed. And it looks a little better. It's not rushing as much. Or I could play it back at 15 frames a second instead of 30. But that actually, that's making a, a pretty good turn. I'm going to end up looking where I'm, I want to look. It's not jerky. If you start adding more keys in the turn, you're pretty likely that to get something that's going to gonna jerk around a bunch. Every key that you add, if it's not lined up perfectly, it's going to be a little jerky. Um, if you want to change that other key, come back right on top of it. Maybe line it back a little bit better. So maybe I'll come here because it starts a little bit of a turn. 
I could try and set a key here, because that's going from a small turn to a big turn. Or I might come here and bring it around. And the way you turn it matters. If I turned it the long way around, it'll turn the long way around. sideways for that last little bit. I might want it to do that or I might want to make it straighten out a little bit here. Just one little key now it's a lot better following the path. But it may be or may not be what I really want. Right? I could want it to walk and turn like that. So it's looking here while it's still turning. Because we walk that way sometimes. <laughs> or you might want it to strafe a little bit with the camera looking one way. So you don't always look right exactly where you're walking. So you don't have to make the camera do that either. It all depends on how you want it to look. If you're doing like a first person shooter simulation thing, you'd probably have a lot of camera moving just straight sideways or straight up or down without looking where it's going. Same thing. <laughs> you see a lot of it back with something. <laughs> so you don't always have to have the camera looking where it's going. It could be looking a little off. And sometimes having the camera looking exactly where it's going is kind of boring. You want it to be doing something else. Yeah? I like you were saying like doing the view in the first person. How can you actually add a little bit of movement to like a walk like they do like on you know, some of the movies now that where they're doing you know, it's okay. not completely a smooth uh, we'll, we'll do that in just a second okay. here let me, let me see how this is so actually I want to just redo it and then since we already have a key there we all just go here There, make the turn there. So you move the keys on the graph on the bottom, right? What? You move the keys on the bottom of the graph. No, I'm, I'm using the bottom to change my timeline. I'm using this to move the timeline. I'm, I'm not moving my keys back and forth at all. I'm just using this to move the timeline. Whenever he moves the camera, it adds. And then whenever I move my camera, it adds a new key. Because I have auto key turned on. That little jerky thing. It looked cool here, but it really didn't do what I wanted it to do. So maybe I'll come up and move that key back in line. And line it up just a little bit better. And then for that key. that. Go in 
going straight. Back to there. Leave that. Still got something going on weird there. So, what's the best way I could do to, to figure out what's going on there? Go to my curve editor, right? If I go to my curve editor, or in my dope sheet, I'd be able to see what's going on. If I went to the dope sheet, I could see. Rotation. Would you just delete the keys or? Yeah. I, I could figure out which one that was. I can kind of go in there and find two things or move around. It's kind of like every time you turn, it curves a little. What? It seems like every time it turns, it, it like kind of rotates, swerves a little. Yeah, and that might have been because of how how I had the it tilted when I did it. So I probably would have wanted to go through and do my turns first, and then my up and down elevation changes. Would have made it a little bit easier. So I could do that. Let's so pop all these off. That's not turning at all. Key turned on. <clears throat> Remember, make sure you turn on auto key if you're so hard doing stuff. And that off so I can straighten this back out. simulate a flight, a plane flying, doing it this way, cheap, we don't make it easy.
So now it's kind of doing what I want. Okay. Turning it sideways so I can make it look up and down now. If you want to add it, like the, the walking effect, how could we do that? No what? What? There's no head bob button. No. Nope. Well, there's an easy way to do it. Frame. Noise. Noise to what? <laughs> we could go in and move each one of these up and down a little bit, right? That'd be painful, but what about the left right? Is there an easier way to do it? There's the thing we did last week that we could possibly use. There's something in here that we could possibly use. If we go to the Z position, could we add Something to that to make it go out, up and down at a regular interval? Yeah, what's the uh, right side the camera? If I right click, assign controller, I can do my waveform. So now I want it to, maybe my period is going to be three, amplitude is going to be like, the whole, because my height is six, make it like, Point one. And the, the good thing about the having the trajectories turned on is you can actually see what's going on. So let's try that. Oh, but now I just lost my path. I have to look at that. <laughs> I thought we could just over overlay it. I'm gonna have to look at that because I, I thought I might well just overlay that under the, the current one, but but no, so I have to look into that. Besides that, are there any questions for making up something follow a path? What? The making the, the walking. I have to figure out. I have to figure that out. So, any other questions? No.